Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this week's video I'm going to take you step by step through the entire process that I've used to take this image from a four piece panoramic right the way through to the finished process image. So we started off with an image that looked like this once we joined the panoramic and we're going to go through and process it till we end up with a much more interesting, much more dramatic image. So let's see how we do all of that step by step in this video. So I'm in the Lightroom library and you can see that I've got some images in front of me and this is the panoramic before we join it together. So all I'm going to do is click on the first image, hold the control and the shift key down or the command and shift key, click on the last image and that's now selected the four images in our sequence. So all I need to do is right click over any of those images and choose photo merge and then panorama or alternately I can use control and M which is the keyboard shortcut. So I click on panorama, that's going to open the panorama options up, that's going to go through now and try to join those four together to give us the panoramic image and then we've got a couple of controls if we want to go through and make some changes to make sure we end up with the exact result that we want. Now, this has gone through and done a really good job for me, so all I need to do is click on Merge, but if you needed to go through and make some adjustments to this, then you've got some options. And I've got a video that's dedicated to just using the Panorama section, and I'll link that in the description below. So if you want to find out a little bit more about how to use this function, I recommend checking out that dedicated video where I go into more detail. For now, I'm happy with everything, so I can click on Merge. Alternatively, I could uncheck Auto Crop, and I could adjust the boundary warp to get the exact image that I want that gives me just a little bit more of the image to work with. Whichever option you want to work with, that's entirely fine. So we'll just click on Merge once I've finished. That'll now go through the process. We've got a bar in the top left-hand corner that tells us how long it's going to take. Once that's finished, that'll create a new DNG file for us. That's the four pieces of that panoramic joined together to give us the entire panoramic image. So you can see there's our new DNG file, so I can click on that. I can press D on the keyboard to open the Develop module. And there's our starting image. You can see it's pretty flat. If we look at the sky, it looks like it's blown out in this section. And it's quite uninspiring, even though the scene itself is quite dramatic. So let's go through and take a look at how we can process this step by step. Bring that detail back into the sky and just add some real drama and punch the overall image. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure that I've got the detail in that sky. And if you're looking at any kind of image and you think it may be blown out, the first thing I'd recommend doing is grabbing the highlights in the develop module, drag those all the way up to the left-hand side and see what you're working with. You can see if we zoom in, pretty much all of the detail is actually in there, even though it looked like when we had those set to the default, that they were looking like they were blown out. So that's pretty cool. We've got that information in there. So let's drag those down, save our highlights, make sure we don't lose anything in there. Now we'll deal with the sky in a moment. Next thing I want to do is just give it a little bit more punch in the color, because at the moment it's looking a little cool. So if we take a look at the temperature, you can see that's all the way over to the blue hand, blue side on the left-hand side. And we've got a little bit of magenta being sort of pulled into the image. Now this is what Lightroom thinks we want to do with the image to get a naturally balanced image, but I want to bring a little bit of warmth back into it. So even though it's a cool, cold day, I want to bring a little bit of warmth back in this. I'm going to take the temperature over a little bit to the right-hand side, and you can see I don't need to go too far, and we very quickly bring back just a little bit of warmth into the greens and the yellows in the actual foreground and the midground. So that's pretty good, as we want to be. Next up, we can go through the clarity section and just give it a little bit more contrast via that. So you can see once we start doing that, we get a lot more contrast in the overall image and we start to get a little bit more defined edges and a little bit more three-dimensionality to the, the image itself. So we're looking pretty good to start off with. And the next thing I want to do is deal with this sky before I worry about dealing with the foreground and the midground. So we've got a couple of ways we could work with that. We could use the adjustment brush and paint the sky in there using the auto masking option and that'll work pretty well. We can do that. Or we could use the graduated filter We've got a couple of different things we could do. So let's try the graduated filter first of all and see what that does, see how that works with the sky. So all I'm going to do is double click on the effect to make sure that everything is set back to its zero point so nothing is affecting the image itself. And what I want to do is just deal with the sky. So I'm going to hold the shift key down on the keyboard and I'm going to drag from the middle of the sky down. Probably taking the center dot to around about the horizon line in this image and then I'm going to let go. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the full effect right at the top. That's going to fade through until we get a lot less effect down on the actual midground of the image. I can adjust this at any point where I've got this little dot. I can easily grab that, reposition it anywhere in the image, 
just to make sure that I've got exactly what I want. I can also adjust the graduation, how quick it goes between the full effect and no effect. So we can do that very easily just by using the top or the bottom lines to adjust that. Very quick and easy. If we take our mouse over the center dot, you'll see that'll show us a red representation of the mask that we're seeing. So you can see the graduation over the mountains in the midground. So let's take the exposure down a little bit on that to give a bit more drama to the sky. That's looking pretty good. Don't want to go too far, probably just around about a third to a half a stop. We'll take the contrast and boost that up a little bit as well. We don't want to go crazy. We don't want to make it look completely unnatural. We want to give it a sense of power and drama. Next up, we're going to go and open the shadows up a little bit just to make sure we don't get too dark with these mountains. So we'll take the shadows, open those up just a little bit. Then we're going to come down to the clarity and we're going to give those a little bit of a tweak as well. So let's take a look at before. There's with the sky before. There's afterwards. You can see it's affecting the tops of the mountain just ever so slightly, but we can deal with those afterwards. So there's a good starting point. If I wanted to, I could bring some color back into this. So if I want to add a little bit more drama, I can use the temp and the tint colors to adjust that. And you can see by taking those over, we can introduce color into it. Now, obviously, that's way too much of an effect. But you see you can quite easily compensate for a lack of color by adding some in, or you can adjust the color that's actually in any kind of part of the image by using these. We'll set those back to what they work, so I don't want to do that. I'm fine with the grey. But those are there if you want to use them. Obviously, you've got all these other options you can use. If you want to bring a little bit of dehaze to add a little bit more punch and drama into it, we can do that. And that's quite useful with the, the sort of background getting a little bit of hazy as he gets further away from the camera lens. And once I'm happy with that, then we'll just say, I can click on Done. If I wanted to, I could actually introduce some colour in by using the colour effect chip, and I could click on that and choose a colour, and then the graduated filter would actually be a colour graduated filter as opposed to just a standard neutral density. But I'm happy with that, so we'll click on Done. Next up, let's go and do the same in return now for the foreground. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to choose the graduated filter again, double click on the effect to make sure everything is set to zero, and we're going to drag this up to meet roughly where the other one center point is. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take the exposure and we're going to lift that a little bit just to brighten the foreground and drag your eye through the picture. That's all I want to do really. I'm not going to do anything else with that. I'll leave that for now. If I want to come back and make changes, I can do that. So let's just click on done. So now we've got a good starting point. We've dealt with the sky and we've got everything looking pretty good. So now let's deal with some of the color in there. So next step we're going to do is just take the vibrance and start to increase that a little bit. So now that's going to make the greens and the yellows in the image, the sort of warmer colors, pop just a little bit. Don't want to go crazy with it. If you find it's too much, everything's non-destructive, so we can pull that back easily. Saturation, on the other hand, will saturate everything. So you can see as we take that up, all of the colors in the image will start to get quite posterized and quite sort of neon in effect. So a little bit crazy. We can pull back the vibrance if you wanted to just to deal with some of that so you can adjust these to your heart's content to balance those colors out as you see fit so that's looking okay not really fast on these greens in the sort of mid ground but we can deal with those in a moment so let's take a look at the shadows whites and the blacks let's get a little bit more contrast in this let's just bump the contrast overall up you can see that starts to add a little bit more punch and drama to everything if we think the shadows are a little bit dark or a little bit light, we can adjust those. So you can see we can easily drop those down by taking to the left. Taking to the right, we can open those shadows up. So we could, if we wanted to, bring the blacks down and open the shadows up to compensate for anything that gets too dark in there. And bring the color down a little bit more because I don't like that sort of neon effect to it. Now, everything with Lightroom, everything when you make an adjustment, like it's because it's non-destructive, you can easily take your time, try something out. If you don't like it, take it back off, start again, adjust and keep repeating. Okay, so that's the basics of the tone information and the color information done. Like I say, I want to deal with these yellows and, and sort of neon kind of colors in there. So I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the HSL section. I'm going to come down to luminance. And I've got two ways I can deal with this. I could deal with it directly with the sliders, or I can use the direct selection tool. If I click on that and take the mouse pointer over the area I want to affect, I can click and hold. If I drag the mouse pointer down, you'll see the greens now start to get a little bit duller as the uh, the luminance is being reduced in there, so that makes it look a lot less neon. If I increase it by clicking and holding and dragging it up, you should see that everything starts to get worse. So you can do that directly, or like I say, you can come on and you can uncheck that, and you can now adjust the colors manually by using the slider. So we can compensate just to make sure we've got everything we want. Saturation, we can say, well, let's bring the yellows down a little bit to make it a little bit more green, or we can bring the greens down and the yellows up to make it a little bit more yellow. 
we want to create some realism in this we don't want to make it look kind of crazy and funky colors going on everywhere so that looks pretty good let's take a look at before and after there's nothing drastic in this it's all pretty sort of subtle so let's just uncheck you can see where everything looks just a little bit posterized and neon we've now just toned that down and subdued a little bit but what i want to do is come back to the basic section we're going to just increase the saturation overall a little bit because we're starting to just get a little bit too sort of we're just getting a little bit of the color in the overall image just being dropped out a bit too much of my liking okay so that's pretty cool i like that the way that's looking at the moment okay so we've done the basics now let's go through and just do some fine tuning now i'm kind of finding this mid-ground mounted range it's just a little dark for my liking so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut to the adjustment brush Gonna click on that or press K on the keyboard. Same as we did with the graduated filter, we're just gonna double click on the effect to make sure everything is back to zero point. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my exposure and I'm just gonna boost that up by about a third of a stop. And then what I can do is I can use my paint brush and paint over this mountain range. Doesn't matter if the effect is too much or too little, I can adjust it easily afterwards. You can use the auto mask if you've got a defined edge, which we do between the sort of sky and the mountain range. So I'm gonna leave that on. And if I want to adjust the brush size, I can use the scroll wheel on the mouse pointer, or I can use the size on the panel itself. And the feather, if I want to sort of soften the edge down or make it harder edged, I can adjust that quite easily there. And I can do the same with the flow and the density. So that looks pretty good. Let's just bring that down a little bit in size. And I'm just going to paint over this mountain range in the mid-ground. And like I say, this is probably a little bit too much. And if I take my mouse over that circle you can see that's what we've painted in so what i can do now is i can adjust that to make sure i've got everything that, the way i want so i can take my contrast to give it a little bit more punch in there i can take my saturation if i want to and clarity and so on and just make that balance a little bit better with the overall image so if we do before and we do after quite subtle but it does actually open that mountain range up a little bit in the midground. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, I can click on done and we're all, all completed on there. Now, I don't really like this fence in the bottom right hand corner. That's kind of drawing my attention. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to choose the crop. Now, if I want to, I can set this to be a specific aspect ratio or alternatively, I can uncheck the little icon, this little uh, padlock. And now I can create a custom so I can go into whatever I want. and I can just resize this bring it up the way I want so I can adjust that to anything I want if I like that I can click on done I can take a look do I like it yay nay well, it looks okay but because it's non-destructive if I don't like it I can come back and I can adjust it to get it exactly how I want so let's just say I prefer that that's looking pretty good and now what I could do is I could easily come into this point and we could use the spot removal and we could just shrink that down and we can use that and see if that'll get rid of this piece of fencing or this railing see how that works mm, not great so i would probably take this into photoshop to do a better job of that if i'm honest but it's okay it's not fantastic but it's quite small in the image so we can sort of zoom back out of that and it's probably not really noticeable like i say if i wanted to take a bit more time i'd go in and do that in photoshop okay so we're pretty close to where we want to be we've got a couple of things left to do totally optional what I'm going to do is, because I've got the Nick collection installed, I'm just going to come in and we're going to go through and we're going to do some noise reduction on this. Because if we take a look, there is a little bit of grain and noise up in the sky, definitely in the background. And when you get panoramics, especially when you're shooting with what I did with this, a not particularly expensive lens and camera combination, I didn't take my DSLR with me, you're going to get noise as it gets further away. The lens isn't great. So what I can do is I could deal with this inside Lightroom if I wanted to. I can easily come down to the detail section and I can deal with the noise in there. But I tend to find that the Nick collection is a little bit better for dealing with this. And the fact it's now free, there's no reason not to try it. So what we're going to do is right click. We're going to say come down and we're going to say edit in and we're going to go to define to. Click on that. It then asks us do we want to deal with a copy of the original file or do we want to edit uh, the copy with the Lightroom adjustments. We've got a couple of different options. It depends how your image is being created. Now, for this, for speed, I'm going to take this down to 8-bit. Uh, I don't want to do a 16-bit at the moment, and we'll just click on Edit. That will then open up the Define interface and allow us to then go in and deal with the noise reduction. So there we go. That's opened up the interface, and you can see now it's going to go through and profile the image, analyze it, and come up with what it thinks is the best sort of settings out of the box. 
If I wanted to, I could go in and spend a lot more time dealing with this to get it exactly the way I want. But for argument's sake and for speed, I'm just going to keep it simple and say I'm going to accept that. And if we take a look at the sky, take a look on the left hand side, that's with the noise as the image is sort of coming straight out of Lightroom. And on the right hand side is where Define has gone through and it's figured out what it thinks is the best noise reduction. And as you can see, if I move this over and back and forth, Hopefully what you can see in the video is that there's quite a lot of noise has been reduced from this. Now obviously you need to be careful and get a fine balance between noise reduction and softening and losing the detail in the image. But like I say, this isn't an overly sharp, it's not a fantastic start in image because of the camera lens combination used. So let's click on save and we'll just jump back out of that, back into Lightroom where we've got our edited version of this image. And then we can go in and do some final adjustments to it. So I'm going to go through and sharpen it. And then probably that's probably as far as I'll take it with this particular image. But like I say, let's have a little look. So there we go. We've got rid of some of the noise in the image. And we take a look at the sky. It already looks a lot better. So let's zoom into some of this detail. And let's get, take a look. We've got something like on the mountain by here. And what I'm going to do is under the detail section, we're going to start using some of the, the sort of add-on extras we can use. So for example... When I want to deal with sharpening, I'll just add some sharpening in there. Arbitrary amount, doesn't really matter what it is. But I want to control what gets sharpened. I don't want everything to be sharp on the image. I want it to deal with just the edges to give that suggestion of it being sharper. And to do that, we're going to use the masking option. Now, if I hold the Alt key down on the keyboard, we can drag that slider over. And you can see, instead of it showing us the image, it now shows us this black and white representation. Now what we're doing is, the white is the area that's going to be sharp and the black is the area that's going to be left untouched. So what I'm trying to do is find that happy medium where it finds the edges of the details in the image without affecting every single little piece of the image. This gives you a better sort of sharpened image for the final result. So that's looking pretty good, so I'm going to let go of that. And now I can increase the sharpening in any of the other settings that I want. So I'm going to bump the sharpening up. I'm not going to go crazy, but it's going to bring back some of that detail in the edges. So Next thing I want to do is just increase the radius a little bit, not too far. I don't want to go crazy with this, but 1.3, 1.4 pixels. Now, the detail is something you need to be careful of because if you start to increase the detail, you'll get a strange kind of painterly effect where the detail is lost and you get this kind of weird patterning going on. So I tend to find I drop the detail down slightly because I don't like that effect in my images. So this is kind of working out quite nicely. So let's take a look at before and after. There's before. There's after. Not crazy. I could probably take the sharpening up a little bit higher, get a bit more in there. But this is a pretty large image. You know, we've got sort of four 16 megapixel images joined together. So we've got a pretty decent sized image to work with. So that's looking pretty good. We leave it at that point. So there we go. So I could go through and carry on tweaking if I want to, but I think we've got this to a pretty good starting point, oh, pretty good end point. So if we take a look at the before and take a look at the after, we can see what we started with and what we've ended up with. So this is where we started off. As you can see, quite a flat and inspiring image where the sky looks blown out. And what we've ended up with is a much more dramatic end result. Now, like I say, you could carry on tweaking this until you get exactly what you want, but hopefully what you've learned through this video is how easy it is to take a pretty bland, flat image and give it some real drama and punch. You may think you've lost information in the image, but Lightroom is fantastic at pulling that detail out, especially if you're shooting in RAW. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's taught you some things you may not have known or showed you how to use some tools in ways you've never used before. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Well, until next time, take care.